Yeah, welcome back to uh, Energy 808, The Cutting Edge. And today we're talking about uh, the county council in Hawaii County. And we have a member of the county council with us, uh, Matt Kanali'i Kleinfelder. And he joins us from Ola, is it? Uh, correct, it's Ola'a. It's uh, Ola'a. the Mountain View, kind of Curtis Town area, uh, about 15 minutes out of Hilo. Yeah, do you worry about eruptions over there? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> uh, we're, yeah, we're about, uh, let's see, maybe a 30 minute drive to where the last eruption happened uh, in Lower Puna, uh, Pohoa area, Kalapana. I'll say one thing you have good broadband. Uh, let me say that not everybody on, on the Big Island has good broadband. Am I right? You know, mine's okay here. I get 11 megabytes per second, and I have to mahalo them for the services they offer. I've tried a lot of different things, and this has been the best to date. <laughs> so thank yeah. you for saying that. It's okay. <laughs> You're looking good. You know, I mean, I, I always say that we do better, um, you know, in, um, in Madrid than we do in Moile Ely. And it's true. <laughs> I don't know why. I can't explain that. And you're you're doing fine in Ola. So, uh, Matt, so tell me why why did you get into the county council? Were you, are you a, uh, a, 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 a a a masochist? <laughs> oh, you got you got jokes today. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to be serious. Now, I got into the county council. You know, I saw an opportunity uh, at uh, say 2017, and uh, I really had no political aspirations in my life. And I had the chance to try. I gave it a shot, and here I am. And uh, it's been a, a really interesting, amazing learning experience for me. Um, my prior background has nothing political in it at all. My wife and I own Nikolehua Cafe in Hilo. And before that, I worked with the great people over at Provision Solar. And I, I was their journeyman electrician project manager for almost, almost 10 years. And so a really neat opportunity taught me a lot. And then uh, next came the opportunity for the Hawaii County Council. I took it and uh, here I am. I'm on my second term, hoping for a third term. We'll see what happens. Okay, what, what's the special sauce that you bring uh, to the County Council? Is it your, well, experience in one or the other of those, of those uh, adventures? Uh, I think it's a culmination of all of it. I've been a bartender. I've been a project manager. Uh, I went to school at UH Hilo, HCC. Um, all of those together gave me a good ability to be customer service oriented with my serving background. Uh, project management, which ties in really well to being council and trying to work through projects and legislation. Um, understanding things from the private sector as a small business person too, gives me a really unique perspective on how I see government and what I think government should do for the community and, and is responsible for. So that's, I think it's a unique, not your normal, I believe, political background, but I think it makes me very well-rounded as a, a county government official. Yeah, that's great. So, um, you know, they, they used to say, and maybe they still do say, that every island, every county has its own special profile personality. And no, no two are identical for sure. And you know it's easy to it's easy to figure out some of the big differences. But what what do you what do you see as the special the special sauce you know the special characteristics for Hawaii Hawaii Island? Hawaii Island is very unique. We're we're huge. All the islands could fit into the footprint of our island. I think that's that's what makes us unique is is our ability to kind of survive in this very big uh, island with very limited resources. Um, it also puts, you know, puts a strain on our residents because we have to travel farther. Uh, we're the farthest from Honolulu as far as shipments coming in. We're always kind of last in line. We have a small population. But I, I think that the people here are absolutely amazing. We, we have been through hurricanes. We've been through multiple lava flows earthquakes I mean not that we all have it in Hawaii and I think everyone in Hawaii state the state is unique but the people who live here and in, and in my district and in the Puna district I mean we've been through such adversity but we always managed to come out on top and I think that's that in itself that's that special sauce that's maybe it's not unique to Hawaii Island but maybe it's unique to the state as a whole 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of, uh, you know, what work does the uh, Hawaii County Council do? I mean, what are, what are the issues that, you know, that, that, that are in play, generally speaking? Uh, what, if I walked into one of your meetings, what kind of issues could I expect would be discussed? Well, you get the, the normal run of the mill, um, you know, government kind of processes that are always being followed. Uh, a lot of legislation, uh, a lot of different funding opportunities and grant funds. I'm, I'm the chair of the finance committee, so I see a lot of grant funding. And <clears throat> I, guess, I guess you just call it the run of the mill legislation. But the county council itself is the taxing and the legislative body. A lot of our ability as a council is granted via state law. And then it's our role as the council to adhere to those state laws or make laws that are stricter, but to really keep our county up to date and current. I, if you walked in in a meeting right now, it could be the most boring experience you've ever had, <laughs> depending on what's in front of us, or the most exciting. You know, we see things <laughs> like the short term vacation rental bills or the rooster bills, uh, I mean, land use, all of it. It's, 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 it's so everywhere all the time it's just hard to keep track of sometimes it really is interesting well you know you talk about the people and i i certainly agree i gotta add you know full disclosure my wife and i had a plantation house um uh, in javi for decades you know we and we spent a lot of time in uh, kohala as a result and we got to love the big island and we got to love the people uh, even now today we have friends all over the big island because of that um but you know they're, they really are special. At the same time, they get into controversies. You may, you may have noticed, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I have noticed that. <laughs> I think that's part, of, that's part of the way the big, the big island you know, works. Um, I can just think off the top of my head, of course, there's uh, Mauna Kea, but there's also um, you know, geothermal and... Uh, uh, gee whiz, there must be a, a lot of you know, land use issues around the state. Uh, and of course, energy, we're going to spend some time here today on that. Yep. So, how, you know, what about that? I mean, people do get very excited about community issues, don't they? Uh, they do. And I, I think that's good. You know, a lot of times I, I feel, I mean, I was just saying it today, I think sometimes there's a big disconnect or gap between the residents and the law bodies that are happening where you know, looking for testimony, even nobody shows up. And it, it's hard because I know people care, but they don't show up. So, you know, it's, it's, it's good to see people tying into an issue and feeling one way or the other about it. Because it just tells me that people pay attention here. I think they do. They really, when they see something they don't like, the community bands together and they come together and they'll go fight it. If they see something they love, they'll band together and they'll go say they love it. But it's it's just good. It's good to see that one way or the other, no matter no matter what's on the table in front of us. It's just neat. It's neat to see people really really feel strongly about their their home. I guess what it comes down to. Yeah. So um, you know what about what about the the politics? Is there a high rate of voting uh, in the Big Island? I mean, people passionate about voting. Are they passionate about candidates? Um, are they passionate about campaigns? And, and how would, has your experience been, uh, you know, running? You know, what, what sort of campaign experiences have you had? Can you talk about how you got into office and, uh, and whether I should come over there and, and try to get into office too and sit, sit alongside <laughs> you in the, in the county council? What do you think? Uh, politics. Politics is interesting. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect when I came in. I've learned a lot, like I said. Uh, I think sometimes it comes down to who throws the best shakas and does the best dance on the side of the road during campaign season. And I, that, that may be the epitome of what a good candidate is. Um, I really feel like people should really, really watch what issues their representative is taking on and what they stand behind and what they stand for and what their morals are, and what their ethics are. I think those are incredibly important, but you know, honestly, Sometimes it's just the amount of signs and how many times they've seen your name. And when they walk into the polls, yep, I remember that name. That's it. You know, it can be that simple too. So I've learned to not overthink it. You do your best. You do everything that you can for your community. For me, if your work 
speaks highly, then you should have a chance of getting reelected. And, and that's kind of what I, I play by. I'll do my best. And if that's not good enough, I, I did everything I could to be a good representative for my community when I had my time in office. Yeah. Well, so all of that considered, wrapping around all of what you've said, what is the future of Hawaii Island? I mean, is it going to be, um, you know, an economic, um, you know, juggernaut? Uh, is it going to be invested all in hotels in Kona? Uh, are there going to be other, you know, sectors that develop? You know, what does the council council want to incentivize, for example, in shaping its future? And and what is its future? You know, Jay, I, I think it is a, it is a really good question. We, we have a tremendous amount of land available here. Uh, I think most people in the state know that you can come here and live here fairly affordably compared to what you see as a national, or not national state housing price level. So we're, we're like the last stand when it comes to affordable places to live. But when you look at that for what it is, it's also saying, if everybody knows that, we're going to start to build out. And as the reality for people here is we don't want to see it built out. We like it the way it is. That's why people come here because it's it hasn't been built vertically yet. And so, yes, to development, but I think there's this there's a real strong community need for smart development and and very a lot of focus on the council and the planning level where we're saying this makes sense here but not here. You know, we look at things like uh, global climate change and how it's going to affect our lower levels and innovation. That's very concerning. You know, we need to be thinking about that now so we're not building in those areas now so we have to move it in 30 years. And unfortunately, that's a large amount of area in the state of Hawaii. And we're, we're, we're due for some serious innovation if all the forecasted models line up. And I think we're moving there faster than we want to, which ties into our solar discussion for today. Um, but the future for Ireland is, I, I, I mean, it, development is that inevitable. But I really think the council and a lot of the members of the council are very akamai when it comes to how we should develop and really understanding the community's concerns and maintaining access to shorelines, uh, making sure we have adequate water supply, uh, adequate housing stock, taking all of these different things into consideration when we discuss developing and what that looks like for our county. It's, that's a big, it's a big question. We could probably spend a good two hours just talking about that alone and not even touch on solar, but I want to give you some time to talk about energy. I think that's why we're here today. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, don't know, but I take, I take what you said as a lesson for me in the sense that, you know, the, the neighbor islands can look over to Oahu and see what Oahu is like. And they can make the comparisons such as you do. Um, and they can say, you know, we, we can learn from the problems, you know, in Oahu, for example, and we're not going to repeat those problems. We're going to we use that as a sounding board, as a, as a learning experience for us. And we can stand fast on what we know is the difference. And I really feel that, that the Big Island has that and you have that. Well, let's go to let's go to energy for a minute. Uh, the, the Big Island has more resources, you know, than any other island. Uh, all the islands have some, but the Big Island is lush in energy resources. Now, are you properly exploiting those resources? Uh, where are we going on further exploitation, further use, further development of renewals? Hmm. Uh, here in Hawaii County, again, you know, our every island could fit into our footprint. That's our reality. So we have a tremendous amount of land space available. And I think I, I want to I'll stay away from the word exploitation. But to I'm sorry, I, I couldn't so. think of a better word at the moment. <laughs> you know, use and uh, benefit by, okay? <laughs> okay, okay, beautiful. So um, we have a tremendous amount of land we could utilize as a solar resource. Uh, here in Hawaii, too, we also have uh, PGV. And we have a tremendous geothermal uh, asset here. And that, that hasn't been built out to full potential, but there's also a community that lives around that plant. And they, you know, there, there are some concerns about how the industry 
affects community. And I think very, you know, very big, there's a, there's a strong basis for that opinion. And that you got to support your community. On the other side, coming from 10 years of, of installing solar with all of this land available to us, you know, why we, we, as specifically Hawaii Island, we should be the shining example for how to be net zero with solar energy given our small population, tremendous land resources, and just because of where Hawaii sits, we have that perfect, we're in that perfect zone for solar. I mean, we have, we're just an incredible solar asset. And whether you want to take that solar to make electricity and, and, and slow down our use of fossil fuels, whether you want to take that and start to develop solar to hydrogen facilities, I mean, there's just an amazing amount of asset here. And we haven't even touched on wind or tidal energy. I mean, just we're just barely, barely touching into those, those areas of energy production. Tidal energy would just be absolutely amazing here. I, I think it could be incredibly productive and not as, I think some people view it as very, um, destructive on the environment. I, I, I disagree. I think solar is a very pristine way of creating energy compared to everything else we have. But tidal energy, that'd be a, that'd be a big swing for, um, for our state as a whole and even for our island. Yeah. So what's been the holdup? Um, you know, I, I, I take your point that, um, you know, the Bay Island has the resources. Uh, it, could, it could be really an extraordinary, uh, you know, icon of clean energy, what, what's the holdup? I, I think, you know, I, I really couldn't tell you. <laughs> we got a lot of incentives. We have our, our state-driven uh, requirement that we hit, was it by 2045, I think, is our state-driven our state -driven requirement. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just been a very slow process. I, I, I talked with Marco Mangelsdorf a lot from ProVision Solar, and he... He just hammers on, we are doing enough. And he's, he's right. You know, we are. And we, it's 2022. By then, you know, people that would be in, in flying cars by now. And you have this idea that solar would just would be taken over and we're moving into different kind of energy sources and hydrogen. And yet we're very much still in that old style of fossil fuel drives the world. And I think that has to change. We just got to make the switch. And maybe it's things like COVID, the current global disruption, supply chain disruption, and that conflict. You see prices of oil skyrocket. I also watched EV permits skyrocket. And so maybe that's what it takes for the people to really get behind ideas is have it affect their pocket. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of talk about community solar, and they call it something else now in Oahu. I, I forget the, the other name. Shared solar, shared solar. Uh, which means um, you know you get a you get a um, an installation of solar. It's on sort of common property um, or somewhere else. It's not on your rooftop, um, and uh, people share in it and they contribute to it. You get a developer who comes and builds a, a relatively large solar facility. Solar facility, and this whole notion of community solar seems to be uh, uh, appropriate to me in Hawaii and and for that matter in in the Big Island because the land you have the land and you have the land. You have some places, you know, that get a lot of sun, a lot of sun, Kona, for example. Um, and um, what do you think the future of community, is there a community solar going on? And what do you think the future of community solar is? You know, because it's different in the sense that it benefits um, people beyond the ones with the rooftop. I, I like that idea a lot. I almost like a, what we call like a livable or a walkable community, but incorporating solar energy into that. I don't know that we have any here on Hawaii Island. Um, I know we have a few microgrids set up, um, including the, the Hank Rogers, um, I think it's Blue Ion or I forget the name of his company, but uh, he has a, a very unique little microgrid set up that he's solar backed. They have their own water supply. I mean, really, really, um, a really nice, like, compound kind of an area. You know, it's beautiful. We could do that. We have, like you said, we have the solar resources. We have the land. Incorporating solar into the build out of affordable housing communities, uh, workforce housing development. That's a tremendous idea because you're, 
you're lowering the cost of living and creating the housing, but also the community around it. I mean, that would be absolutely beautiful if we could get more of those going. That's a great idea. Yeah, well, um, you know, question I, I put to you is what can the county council do? Because, I mean, you're passionate about this. You're known to be passionate about it. Uh, what can the county council do, uh, you know, uh, if, if it if we woke up one morning and said, let's do something passionate? What what are within the the powers, so to speak, of the county council of any county? Well, I I think I think I know that an idea like that could be posed before the housing development agency and say, look, this is the direction that we want to go. And sometimes it's as simple as a conversation. It doesn't have to be an overarching law, just a simple conversation. This could be incredible for our residents, this could be incredible for our community. Can we do this? Yes. Uh, another thing that we are focusing on right now is the mass transit department, which is funded largely by our GE tax increase that we did um, 2018. Uh, that is now almost a $50 million fund for the County of Hawaii. And so those funds are being taken directly to the mass transportation department and we are in process of electrifying our bus fleet, uh, purchasing hydrogen vehicles. We are look to build a new facility in Hilo in Kona that will incorporate solar into the, the building structure, which will then be used to offset our usage for vehicle charging and for the building itself. And those you know, those, that's a, to me, that's a huge step. I've been kind of pushing for a long time. Can we do this? Can we incorporate solar? And here we are. We have the funding. We have a mass transportation director, John Andel, who's doing amazing things. And he's getting ready to electrify our bus fleet. Uh, we have Riley Saito in our research and development department, who's been working on this idea for years. He's an energy specialist with a tremendous amount of knowledge. So all the little pieces are starting to come together. And so the question, what can the council do? We can help appropriate that funding. We can push hard for those ideas when it's that kind of in that political arena. And then we can be that pressure from behind and just following up the departments and making sure we're making that progress. And then when it comes time to fund and appropriate the project and get it done, then we say yes. And oh, um, I'm proud to say we're getting there. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. I mean, all, that, all those projects are very important. Electrification is very important, especially in the Big Island. But you know you have uh, range anxiety with electric cars, um, and that you know that slows you down until you get charging stations. One the one thing um, I remember is um, a couple of mayors ago, uh, there was free bus service um, from um, I guess people would live on the Kona, on the Hilo side, and they would work in the hotels on the Kona side, and you know when their shift was over, it was late at night, and so forth, and there was a much better deal to take a bus, a free bus, uh, from you know to commute with the job and back home again. And uh, I I have a recollection that that was everybody loved it, but it went away. Is there any chance, uh, in your view, that this could come back? Maybe maybe with hydrogen or electric buses of some kind. Uh, actually, our mass transportation director, within about six months of being uh, put in. Uh, asked us and brought in the legislation himself to uh, require there's, there's no fee for our buses right now. And the purpose there is to drive up ridership. And then at the same time, when you drive up your ridership, your numbers increase, he can then apply for more federal funding. And so he already did bus fares are free in Hawaii County right now, as we also step into electrify. So we're taking a mass transportation leap here we're going to electrify offer free fares and all based on that extra little half percent of ge funds that we implemented three years ago so it's it's yes yes and yes and it's all coming together really nicely i may have to move back man <laughs> you're welcome to come back <laughs> but let, let's, get, let's connect these resources and possibilities on hawaii island with the state in general because, uh, you know, although, as you say, that, you know, the county council and Big Island and other uh, neighbor islands can, can do stuff, uh, for that matter, Oahu, too, um, you know, um, the state legislature has, is the one 
with the clout and the money um, to develop um, renewables and, and meet the goal and, and, uh, and of course do solar. Um, so um, where does Hawaii Island fit in the, the, the statewide plan for all of this? I think there's a great question for our state legislators. You know, we push hard. We push hard here a lot to try and get funding. Um, it really comes down to state directives, governor, uh, the mayor's relationship with our governor. And, you know, a lot of times the council, the council is, a, is a strong body, but a lot of times it comes down to the mayor. So I, it's a great question. And I know where you're headed with that. Um, as, a, as a council made of two terms, I'm gonna say, you gotta ask the state. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew you were gonna say that. And that, is, that is the correct answer. <laughs> what about no, money? You know, does, does Hawaii Island have enough money um, to do what it wants to do? I mean, because this is also a function of the, you know, of the state legislature and the budget and all that stuff. Um, you know, what's what's the uh, and you're you're in the fiscal committee there in the council, right? So how is, what's the situation like in terms of having the money that the council and the island, you know, the <laughs> county want to do? That's a really interesting question because what we thought coming out of a pandemic was everything was slumped. And actually what we've seen across the board, uh, I'm digging into the fuel tax right now. So I'm trying to decrease our fuel tax here on Hawaii Island uh, by 10 cents a gallon. But I'm basing that on the amount of surplus that I'm seeing in the highway fund, which is based on fuel tax. And the more I've looked, coming out of COVID, where you think governments would be have less revenue than projected, we're seeing the exact opposite. We're seeing increased spending across the board, and we're seeing increased GE revenue. We're seeing increased fuel tax revenue. The state is sitting on uh, about a billion dollar surplus. And so you're going to see funding happening all over the place now. And the same within the county. Surplus, surplus, surplus. So we're doing really well right now. Property tax values are up uh, across the board. What happens in the next year or two, I don't know. But inflation and the economy is just, it's all really kind of strange versus what you'd expect coming out of what we saw in a pandemic. Yeah, it is, it is strange because you, you you see the these good news events, but you say, hmm, is this going to last a long time or what? You exactly. know, you hear about all the surges on the mainland and, and COVID. Did COVID have a destructive effect uh, on, on the Big Island? Uh, what effect did it have? I think in Hawaii, we actually saw a relief from the tourism and the amount of visitors we have. And I think, I really do think that people saw that as a beautiful thing, hard on businesses, small business owner, it was hard. We actually closed our business during COVID. Um, but I mean, it was, it was a really interesting time to sit back and watch everything rebound from the inundations that been happening for centuries. And so really hard on the business community. It's good to see everybody coming back, taking off the masks and having fun and going to parties. And feeling good about it, but at the same time, you know, there's something beautiful about is that silver lining in the pandemic where we saw Hawaii for what it used to be versus what it is become. Yeah, that's very touching, I, and I totally agree. And uh, we can't, we can't now that we've seen it again, right? Now that we've yeah. had a bit of nostalgia around the true values of the state and the culture, we can't let go, we can't forget it again. We have to stay hard. Ready. Hard to unsee it. Yeah, you can't, you can't unsee it again. <laughs> and it might be, a good friend of mine said, might be the last time we see it in our lifetimes. Yeah, that's uh, the problem. You know, I, let me ask you, uh, my, my last question is, uh, where is Hawaii going as you see it? Because I think the lens uh, through which you see the state, you, uh, you know, as a council member in the Big Island, uh, you as a resident of the Big Island, you as a business person in the Big Island, you as a guy who is, you know, close to the land in the Big Island, um, you have a different perception, I think, a different lens to look at where the state is and what its strengths are and so forth. Where do you see the state going? Should we be worried about the brain drain? Should we be worried about tourism? Uh, should we be, be worried about mm, failure to somehow keep up with the things we need to be in touch with or, mm, or not? What, what are your thoughts? 
I think I think all my decisions come down to my kids. Are my kids gonna look at me and everyone's cakey gonna look at them and say, you guys did good at this time because you set us up to be sustainable and to grow and to be strong. And I if I make decisions based on what's good for my kids, 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 kids versus what what's good for a, a small group now. You know, I think that is that is the decision making that needs to happen. We have very finite resources here. We saw something beautiful during the pandemic when we were alleviated of the mass amount of tourism, but we also saw the backlash and we understood how tied we are to the to the tourism industry to support what we see as our economy. For, for myself, we got to get off being addicted to fossil fuels and having everything shipped in. There's not enough food production happening here. There's not enough energy production happening here locally. We have to make those changes in light of everything that we know, climate change to COVID, I mean, whatever you, wherever you want to go with it. We know, I think we all inherently know, we love Hawaii for what it is. We got to take care of our keiki. We have to become more energy brilliant and start making really good decisions for our kids and for our environment. And we are poised to do that right now. And we just got to take, we got to take the next step and do it. So that, that's, that's my take. That really is my take. Take care of your community, grow your own food, you know, whatever it's going to be for you, but work on sustainability as a, as a whole. I totally agree. And well, that's a great lens to look at look at things into the future. Um, and it, it does suggest to me that I would really like to do another show with you, Matt, on, on agriculture, on food production, on sustainability, even in times when the supply line could be in jeopardy. It is in jeopardy. Um, and Hawaii has such tremendous possibilities in that regard. Uh, and the first possibility is to feed itself. And the, and, the, and the big island is the best possibility to achieve that right now, I think. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Well, another show, another time. Uh, okay. Matt Kaneali, Eve Kleinfelder, I really appreciate you coming on, I, uh, even on short notice. And uh, I, I'm so impressed, and I wish you well, and I want to circle back with you later. Thank you so much. Uh, mahalo, Jay. Appreciate the time today. Appreciate the opportunity. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.